Hey, peace world. What's good, fight fans? Uh, going to jump into some bite down boxing. Try to keep this really quick um, and invite you to come over to bite down boxing dot com www bite down boxing dot com uh it's an array of articles out there just recaps of the uh the action from last night a pretty dope weekend of fights but several write-ups over there uh didn't get to everything but uh you know check it out i might even throw some of the links in the description um it's crazy you know, to come back and be fa faced with the situation where their, uh, you know, action is on multiple platforms and you actually have to put together a strategy on how you're going to watch what you want to see. So we had action on ESPN Plus, The um, Zone with the, the, the fight camp finale from Matchroom Boxing, and then uh, PBC on Fox, headlined by, um, you know, Sean Porter is the first, you know, pay-per-view caliber fighter to, uh, you know, to be back on, to be back in the ring, <clears throat> you know, since the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and whatnot. So just some quick highlights for me, man. I was very interested in this Alan Babic or Babic fight, <clears throat> Croatian heavyweight against, uh, Chicago and Shondell winners. And I, I, I was mainly interested in this because I saw Shondell in action down in um, Texas back in February on the Garcia card, Garcia Vargas card, where he faced um, Joseph Parker. He's an undersized heavyweight. He's really a cruiserweight. He's 39 years old. And, you know, I didn't know much about Babbitt, but Babbitt uh, got the TKO in two rounds, two knockdowns. Um, You know, Shondell is cornered by Montel Griffin. They need to talk to him and convince him to to, to, to not compete anymore. Definitely not a heavyweight. Uh, he briefly had a moment. He, he, he connected first, I want to say, with the right hand. Some little footwork in there and uh, turned Babic and caught him. And you thought maybe he could do what he said he was going to do, which was use his experience in box. And um, and catch you know and, and catch Babic with some uh, something that he didn't see running him into something set some traps, but as soon as uh, Babic started touching him, you saw that uh, winners just fell apart. I mean, physically he started falling apart, and then uh, you know tactically he just didn't have anything to off offer, and he was you know he, it was it was target season. You hate to see it. You hate to see it at heavyweight. You hate to see guys getting hit with, I mean, defensively, I mean, uh, defenselessly getting hit. And once his legs were gone, you know, he was just getting caught with humongous shots. You know, helped the dude out. Babic afterwards called out uh, Philippe Her Hergovic, which is one of my favorite, uh, you know, rising heavyweights to keep an eye on. It makes no sense for them to fight at this stage, but I mean, if they want to get it on and there's a way to do it, because Hergovic is fighting on the zone, I watch it. Also on that fight camp card was Katie Taylor, the undisputed lightweight champion in the rematch against Delphine Pursun. Um, Shout out, I can't remember my man's name off the top of my head, but he had a side-by-side -side of the punch stats from the Bracus and McCaskill fight uh, for the undisputed welterweight title, and then the punch stats for last night's fight with Katie Taylor and Delphine Pursun. And these are extremely difficult fights to, to, uh, to judge and score. I thought Katie Taylor pulled it out. Um, you know, when you fight like Pursun and you kind of have that pressure game and, and, and it's hard, everything is all muddled up and, and hard to see the work, the real work, and then you have someone over here that's doing, you know, pinpoint stuff and, and accuracy and more aesthetically pleasing boxing movement and countering and setting traps and changing levels. I guess it that stands out to me. Uh, looking at the punch stats, you know, Pursun has a case. But I'll say this. Pursun, her, her body language at, at the decision lets me know that she thought she lost the fight. And then it's an article out there on uh, boxing scene where she says she thought that Katie won the fight. 
So I'm good. I don't know about the 98 to 93 card. But, um, and, I, and another thing for me was when Katie answered the 10th round, her body language, her energy and everything was markedly better than what we saw in the first fight where I thought she lost that fight. Um, but pursue, man, you know, tough, gritty. Uh, but when you fight that style, it's just hard to see how you're truly effective. And just like with McCaskill, when you throw 100 more punches, 230 more punches, and then still land the same amount, there's got to be some knock against you for your effectiveness, you know, and, and effective aggression and your, your accuracy. You know, we're splitting hairs. And I, I just thought Delphine came up a little short. And then the 10th round that Katie Taylor did have, I thought was phenomenal, where she fought the way Pursue wanted to fight. And 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 fought better than her. And I'll be I'll be honest, man. We're already we're doing the women's game a disservice because we're already making a championship fight. We're condensing it to ten rounds, and then it's two minutes. That's almost like how weird college football is when they get into overtime and you take a game, you take the ball and give it to the offense on the twenty-five yard line, I believe. You know, what if we made batters go to the, uh, what if in Major League Baseball, every at-bat started at a full count? And you couldn't any, or if or if uh, you went up to bat and any uh, called strike where you didn't swing, any called strike, you were out. Imagine how that would change the game. So condensing it to this, to this two minutes, wherever we are with that medically or not, uh, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's, like I mentioned before, it's difficult to write those fights up. So, hell, I, I got to imagine that it's difficult to score them. And it's just, you know, as a fighter, if you know that you've lost the first round, how hard do you have to dig to go back and get and, 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 and change your effort and energy for the second half of that two-minute round and make the round difficult to score? So I just think it's... It's just not natural to boxing. Looking at the Pavet, the uh, the main event, but another solid women's fight uh, or moment for women's boxing. Uh, actually, that was one of my favorite or my more uh, or an appearance by Katie, a performance by Katie Taylor, where um, I I don't, I don't I hate using the word hype, but I thought she looked great. I really did. I saw a lot more than what I'd seen to this point. And she's fighting tough-ass uh, opponents. So I, I'm not a Katie Taylor hater. I just kind of wasn't seeing, uh, you know, some of what I was being told about her. I wasn't seeing some of those things. But she's definitely a champion and a, and a good champion, a great champion. The fight that made it on ESPN and, and mainstream sports. Alex Van, Alexander Povetkin's fifth round stoppage of uh, Dillian White uh, after being knocked down two times in the fourth himself. Um, slow start through the first two or three rounds. And it's crazy because Dillian White trying to be posed, you know, controlled, not do more, not make it more difficult than what you need to make it. You get the two knockdowns, you have total control of the fight, and then you still try to come out and be composed and, and smart. And then a, a wily veteran just does something remarkable with this uh, slips that right hand, slips off to the left, and as as uh, White's, you know, his body, as he re goes to recoil to get back in his stance and whatnot or do what he's going to do next, uh... Povetkin fires this left uppercut that, you know, damn near knocks Dillian White up into the matchroom boxing, you know, mansion or whatever that build, the, the structure that it is. Uh, he's underneath the uh, the ropes. He knocks that little advertisement thing over, and there's no sense in counting. He's out of it. And uh, so goes away, uh, you know, Dillian White's mandatory status thousand days or whatever whatever throw all of that away uh, they're talking about a rematch uh, later in the year maybe in December if possible uh, and then also that Pavetkin knockout is very uh, similar 
to the George Joe George knockout of uh, Marcos Escudero a couple of weeks ago on the in the opener of the Angelo Leo uh, versus uh, Tremaine Williams super bantamweight title fight on Showtime Showtime Championship Boxing's return very similar sequence right there in both of those with the same results uh, except there was in the middle of the ring for uh, George and Escudero but um. So that's that. Actually, man, I'm at ten minutes, so I'm I'm already over my time. I'm just gonna leave it at the uh, at the at the at the DAZN card. Uh, I might come back and do a second one on the other action, the PBC and the top rank stuff. Get to talking, man. It's just, where does the time go? Anyway, bite down boxes. Don't let them count you out. Peace.